Hello, in this video I'll be discussing what BDNF is, the function of BDNF, the various reasons why BDNF is important for learning and memory, and the relationship BDNF has with hippocampal function, long-term memory, long-term potentiation, synapsis, and neurogenesis. Although I may not cover every aspect of BDNF in this video, I plan to make a sequel to this one and so on in order to go in depth on the topic of BDNF. If there are any questions you'd like me to answer about BDNF, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. What is BDNF? So what is BDNF? First of all, BDNF stands for Brain Derived Neurotrophic Factor. BDNF is a signaling protein, aka ligand, which is found in the body and the brain. This protein, coincidentally, is produced by a gene with the same name, the BDNF gene. So what does it mean if BDNF is a signaling protein? Well, to better understand that, first know that BDNF is a member of the neurotrophin family of growth hormones. Another example of a neurotrophin is nerve growth factor. BDNF as a neurotrophin. More specifically, neurotrophins are a family of signaling proteins that cause the survival, development, and improved function of neurons. Neurotrophins can also be seen as a class of growth factors. Growth factors are secreted proteins that are capable of signaling particular cells to survive, differentiate, and or grow. Growth factors like neurotrophins are also known as neurotrophic factors. Neurotrophic factors work by preventing the targeted neuron from going under apoptosis or programmed cell death, thereby allowing the neuron to survive. Neurotrophins also stimulate the differentiation of progenitor cells, which are like stem cells, to form neurons. BDNF is found in the brain and also in other parts of the human body. BDNF supports the survival of existing neurons and encourages the growth and differentiation of new neurons and synapses through axonal and dendritic sprouting. In the brain, BDNF is active in the hippocampus, the cortex, the cerebellum, and the basal forebrain. All these areas are key to our learning, memory, and higher level cognitive abilities. BDNF can be found in many different types of tissue and cells. For example, the gene that produces the BDNF protein is found to express itself in the retina, the CNS, the motor neurons, the kidneys, and the prostate. What are the functions of BDNF? So far, I already mentioned the neurotrophic effects of BDNF, and that it is active in the hippocampus, the cortex, and the basal forebrain for learning, memory, and higher level thinking. Let me further specify the functions of BDNF. BDNF improves the survival of cholinergic neurons of the basal forebrain, as well as neurons in the hippocampus and the cortex. The BDNF gene in signaling protein factor is reduced in the brains of Alzheimer disease patients. BDNF also improves the survival and resilience of injury to neurons. BDNF also has a role in helping activity-dependent brain plasticity, such as in learning and memory. So how long uh, it takes you to learn something is hugely dependent on BDNF. Because children have a highly plastic brain, their rate of learning is much higher than adults. BDNF and the hippocampus. The hippocampus is a key brain structure required for our ability to encode or learn new information. Damage to the hippocampus severely impairs a person's learning ability. For example, there was a man named Henry Molaison, or patient HM for short. This man underwent a surgery that resulted in the near total destruction of his brain's hippocampi in order to cure his epilepsy. The result was that this man no longer was able to form new episodic memories. But patient HM was able to describe the memories of his past all the way to his childhood. Essentially, he was living in the past. The hippocampus relies on BDNF for its encoding function. You'll notice that early on in Alzheimer's disease patients, their hippocampal function is compromised. That's why Alzheimer's disease patients suffer memory loss. 
So the observed decline of BDNF in Alzheimer's disease patient's brain could explain the atrophy of the hippocampus, thereby the loss of memory in Alzheimer disease patients. A lack of BDNF cripples the hippocampus by weakening synaptic strength, meaning the transmitted neuron signal are a lot weaker, and by making hippocampal neurons more vulnerable to stressors and atrophy. A lack of BDNF or disruption of the BDNF-TRKB receptor signaling causes an impairment to LTP, which is the strengthening of synaptic connections between neurons in response to learning. BDNF deficiency also decreases synaptic innervation, where synaptic innervation refers to the number of connections a neuron makes with other neurons. So high or sufficient levels of BDNF in the hippocampus is required for efficiency in learning and memory. BDNF and long-term memory. Memories that last for hours are also known as short-term memories. Memories that last for days, weeks, and even a lifetime are known as long-term memories. The formation of long-term memories requires a process called uh, consolidation. Memory consolidation takes place mainly in the hippocampus. BDNF causes and is required for LTP in the hippocampus. LTP, or long-term poten potentiation, is thought to be a key part in the formation of long-term memories. The continued existence or persistence of consolidated long-term memories requires BDNF. And according to one study, blocking the production of BDNF in the hippocampus causes a reduction or deficit in long-term memory persistence. Whereas the delivery of BDNF proteins to inside the brain's hippocampus reverses the impairment of long-term memories. So one may conclude that in order to improve memory, one must increase the level of BDNF in the brain's hippocampus, but different parts of the brain are also connected to the hippocampus, storing and or processing different types of information and different types of memories, like skills. For example, your motor skills are a type of memory or information that comes from and or is controlled by different parts of the brain. The cerebral cortex controls the movement of the muscles, the basal ganglia controls the position in voluntary movements, their cerebellum uh, fine-tunes the movements of the muscles, and the motor cortex also controls the voluntary movement of the muscles. So one must not only focus on ways to improve the hippocampal function, but also on ways to improve the function of the whole brain. Of course, I'll get I'll try to go into more detail about improving total brain function in later videos. BDNF and LTP BDNF also plays a role in hippocampal long-term potentiation, LTP, which is a long-term enhancement of excitatory uh, synaptic strength or activity that is required for learning and memory. BDNF influences or modulates uh, neuronal morphology or changes and synaptic plasticity, including LTP through TRK-B receptor activation. A deficit of BDNF in the brain contributes to the manifestation of neurological diseases such as Huntington's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and depression. All these disease pathologies are related to decreased levels of LTP. BDNF in synapses. BDNF improves a synaptic plasticity and synaptogenesis, which is the formation of synapses between neurons. Know that a synapse is the junction or structure that connects one neuron to another, allowing the passage of cellular and signal information. So BDNF causes two things. First, BDNF improves the strength of the signal communicated from one neuron to another, and second, BDNF increases the number of connections a neuron has with other neurons for con communicating a signal. Altogether, the improvement in synapse strength and number can be said to improve cognitive function depending on the level of BDNF at certain locations of the brain. I personally view this like uh, an GF, which has the ability to improve the pain reception of certain nerves in the body, because NGF encourages the growth and development of peripheral neurons. You essentially feel more from your periphery nerves. Likewise, an improvement in synapse formation in synaptic strength improves the neuron's ability to send information to different neurons at increased strength. So in the case of elevated levels of BDNF, 
I conject that the effect is that your thoughts are clearer and that it is easier for your brain to connect more pieces of information together to understand a particular subject. In fact, a lack of adequate synapse number and strength causes mild memory loss, which further supports my conjecture. You may also note that the explosion of synapse formations normally occurs during early brain development in childhood. So one may assume that improving levels of BDNF in an adult's brain may help to bring them closer to a child's sponge-like learning ability. BDNF also improves dendritic growth, where dendrites carry the neuronal signals transmitted from synapses to the neuron cell body. BDNF is necessary for our survival. Finally, I would like to mention that BDNF is one of the most potent substances that turns on neurogenesis in the brain. Mice that are born without the ability to produce BDNF experience brain defects and sensory nervous system defects, and eventually die after being born. Let me go ahead and re uh, read an excerpt from one of the studies that showed this particular um, occurrence. So BDNF and NT3 deficient mice were generated by gene targeting. NT3 deficient mice displayed severe movement defects and most died shortly after birth. The mutation causes the loss of substantial portions of the cranial and spinal peripheral sensory and sympathetic neurons, significantly spinal proprioceptive efferents, and their peripheral sense organs, which are like muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs, were completely absent in homozygous mutant mice. BDNF deficient mice displayed deficiencies in coordination and balance. Excessive loss of neurons was detected in most of the peripheral sensory ganglia examined, but the survival of sympathetic neurons was not affected. The most marked reduction of neurons was observed in the vestibular ganglion, leading to a loss of innervation of the sensory epithelia of vestibular compartments of the inner ear. Now, this suggests that BDNF is a key player for mammals' normal neurological development and that BDNF is required for our survival. I also noted that the study indicates that the inner ear is negatively affected by the lack of BDNF and NT3. This gives me reason to speculate that there is a relationship between BDNF and tinnitus. Another connection that I notice is that older people are more likely to experience uh, tinnitus than younger people. This could be due to the fact that older people produce significantly less BDNF than younger people. The deficit in BDNF may contribute to the worse neuronal health of the inner ear and also contribute to cognitive deficits like Alzheimer's disease and dementia. So in my upcoming videos, I'll try to go over what increases or decreases the level of BDNF in the brain and make a video that focuses on methods available for increasing brain BDNF for cognitive enhancement. And thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'd appreciate if you like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye.